Having. Dan Gold, essentially tattooist to the stars, TV star, rock star of the art world. Welcome to Honda, Dan. Hello. Uh, thank you for that uh, introduction. Uh, half of that is not true, but thank you very much. Yeah, uh, welcome to Motorcycle Live. We are here today to talk about... Well, we're here to talk about motorbikes, because as well as being an artist and tattooist and TV star and all of that lovely stuff, you're also a motorcycle nut. Um, there are bikes on here, on the stand, even, that you've had a hand in designing, haven't you? Uh, that's correct. I started riding motorbikes as soon as I uh, could get off bicycles, basically. Uh, and I've always been in love with two wheels. Yeah, as soon as I could get my hand on a bike, um, I got a bike. Um, and I've been riding motorcycles um, ever since, really. Let, let's talk about one of the bikes we've got on stand. Over, over at, the, at the back of the stand, there's a custom build section. One of those is a CMX 500 Rebel with a skateboard holder on that I believe you had a hand in the full design and build with Russ down in, in Sussex. Tell us about that build, Dan. What was the thinking behind that? So basically, we went on the Rebel 500 launch and uh, one of the surprises was how much fun that bike was to ride. And so one of the things that we thought was, what are the possibilities with this bike? And how can you customize an entry level motorcycle to a budget? And we had some ace freedom time on that bike on the press launch, didn't we, Dan? <laughs> so, so talk us through some of the riding we did on that little Rebel. So basically, for those of you who have, who have never been on a press uh, release before, which I hadn't, so basically you get like a really good rider who rides at the front, and then you get some really good riders, maybe five or six journalists who ride behind there, generally ex-professional riders. And then ask goons at the back somewhere, yeah. yeah. And then it's like, it's a beautiful harmony as you go up and down the mountains in Spain. So it's almost like those speedboats you see on holiday where you, you get them and they go through the turns and everyone leans together. And then sometimes, just sometimes, about 40 to 50 feet behind, you get some idiot <laughs> who's suffering from heat stroke, yeah, that's dressed me. inappropriately, holding on to a giant inflatable banana. And that was basically me on this press launch, sometimes, trying to keep up with you professionals. And sometimes you get stray wildlife as you're riding down the mountain as well. That was interesting. Well, the, the lucky thing was that one of the journalists had a love for dogs and, and stopped to, to pet one. And, uh, and that gave me a chance to catch up with the rest of you. It proved how good the brakes were on that Rebel, quite <laughs> frankly. It was an interesting ride, but one of the things that was really amazing was that when we got down to the beach and everyone took their helmets off, was everyone was laughing and everyone was smiling. And I think that really, there was that moment that really brought it back to me where smiles per miles, Nice and simple and easy motoring is sometimes a lot more fun. And that fun factor clearly influenced the design of your custom-built Rebel. Yeah, so we just took that base uh, and the other thing, so basically we went back. So what people don't know when you go on these press launches is that after the ride, uh, the work isn't finished. There is many, many more hours of work, which generally is in the bar. <laughs> Sp speaking of which... I know that you're a huge fan of the Goldwing. Oh, yes, yes. You've, you've owned a Goldwing, haven't I've you? I've owned several Goldwings, yeah. So my first Goldwing was uh, 1980 uh, 1200 Plain Jane, which I customized. And then I've had a 1500 one as well. Yeah. And the reason for saying talking about the bar is that last night over Twitter, <laughs> we, had, we had a bit of a, um, a to and fro with some motorcycle journalists. And I don't know how much beer we'd drunk at this point, but we seem to have agreed to taking new gold wings to the Isle of Man and having winner stays on style laps of the Isle of Man. I don't know how I've talked myself into this, but are we going, Dan? Yes, we're definitely doing that one. <laughs> it's on camera, so, you know. <laughs> and I, I know you have to commute into London, Dan, and um, you've done that commute, frankly, on some inappropriate machinery, haven't you? Uh, I've had some really inappropriate motorcycles in my time. I think uh, probably I had the uh, Fireblade SP2. The thought for me of commuting into London <laughs> on a Fireblade SP yeah. That just makes my hips ache thinking of that. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm not as young as I used to be, so my wrist and my back was suffering a bit. But it's a, it's a fantastic bike, and um, we certainly got there fast. And then I had the uh, F6C, which is the naked Goldwing. Naked Goldwing. So you got 1800 uh, 
cc engine you've got the same torque and you've got no weight and no storage that flat six engine is silky smooth and oh it's beautiful and i think that's the thing why i fall in love with the gold wings every time i ride them i think they they look quite um scary when you look at them but actually when you when you ride a gold wing they're so easy to ride and they're really easy to ride in london as well and i've heard a rumor that those f6c's you can hustle those bad boys yeah i mean that that thing would uh that would do a rolling burnout in six gear on the motorway i've been told officer uh, <laughs> now, Dan, or, or on the track <laughs> I, I know you're riding an africa twin at the moment um commuting on that but i also know that you you've proven to yourself how good that bike is off-road because i've seen oh. you on the isle of man putting dave thorpe and his team to shame <laughs> yeah so um i happened to mention that my off-road skills were non-existing so dave thought it'd be a good idea to uh, take me to the isle of man and then um, go on an off-road excursion with Dave Thorpe and his he's adventure He's still here, center. he's in one piece. <laughs> Just, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, uh, those guys are lunatics and, and we took bikes where no bike should ever go. I mean, it, the, the fog was so bad, the sheep were suicidal and uh, uh, it was an hour since we last saw a road or anything that remotely looked like a road. And it, a crazy it was, day, a crazy day. Crazy. Now, and that Af Africa Twin, you've just been saying to me, you've got a plan for that bike. What are you going to do with it, Dan? So I just think I love the African Twin. Uh, there's, there's a couple of bikes in the Honda range that's always been my favorite. So you've got the Fireblade, which I've owned several of, and then you've got the Goldwing. And the other one is the African Twin. I absolutely love it. Uh, I just think it's the perfect bike. You know sometimes when you get a vehicle that's perfectly balanced and, and this bike just feels completely perfect from the wheels up. So the amount of, of brakes that it has to horsepower to weight ratio, it just feels complete, like the complete bike. Um, but you're, you're an artist. And, and the story you tell me of your plans for that bike, yeah. that sounds insane. So, so I, I've got my new shop that I've just opened up on Oxford Street. And obviously, uh, you get like half a million of people walking through Oxford Street every day. And my bike is parked outside. So I thought it would be a good idea to do something for people to stop and look at a bike. So I'm thinking to do a pink, <laughs> a, a bubblegum pink camouflage uh, paint job <laughs> with... <laughs> with googly eyes and uh, <laughs> and the front, so yeah, I think I think I think that would be appropriate. Yeah. So here's the thing about Dan Gold's new shop, the only tattoo parlor that there's ever been on Oxford Street. It's at the back of the Ann Summers store. So I'm thinking, <laughs> what questions am I going to ask Dan Gold this morning? I'm doing a little bit of research. Everybody that walked past my laptop saw me on the Ann Summers website. <laughs> I got some strange looks just now, Dan. Well, the thing is, being an artist and being a tattoo artist, you're in the business of making people happy. Now working with Ann Summer, we make some of the people really happy. So, um, so it, it's, I, I, I think there's been a good collaboration uh, working with them, and uh, I think it'll be really fun to do a pink bike parked outside that store. Think, thinking about your art and your tattooing, Dan, um, I know you've tattooed some famous faces. Can, can you do a massive clang and drop some names of people who, whose artwork they are wearing? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's no, it's no secret that we used to tattoo a lot of the, a lot of the rock stars and and uh, and models and stuff. And and some of the, some of the more famous ones is, you know, the, the Kate Moss and the. Uh, Say that again. I don't think the mic picked that up. Go on, Dan. So we ta we tattoo like people like Kate Moss and. Uh, Britney Spears and, and people like that. So, okay, yeah. we but, need to have but a chat. They, but they're really lovely people and they're really uh, normal. Yeah, we should have a chat because I know that um, my stag do dream was to have <laughs> rock and roll tattooed across my chest, we, motorhead font. I think we need to talk after yeah, this show. I think so Kate Moss to me, I think, basically. I think the rock and roll on your chest is a deal like the uh, gold wings around the Isle of Man. <laughs> okay, we got one minute left. So take us back to the very beginning. I know you've got some funny anecdotes about how you start off as a tattooist. I mean, how, how did you start? How did that first tattoo machine that you ever used? So basically, back in the day when I started, I've been tattooing for nearly 27 years now, coming up to 28 years. Uh, you couldn't go on the internet to buy a tattoo machine, A, because there was no internet. <laughs> so basically, uh, I found an old book that described things that had been smuggled into a Russian prison through the um, backside. 
and one of them was a uh, tattoo machine, but it was in bits, so I had to work out how, how to do it. And basically, it was a Skeletric engine with a toothbrush, and then it had like a Parker pen on it, and then there was a little bit uh, of guitar string as a needle. So I built that and then started to tattoo myself with it. You built your own tattoo machine, yeah. started to tattoo yourself with it. Yeah. That's confidence. Yeah. Yeah, well, I soon realized that it's a lot better to tattoo other people than yourself because yeah, it helps I a lot. So. Yeah. How, about the, how about your first tattoo job ever? How did that come about then? So basically, I started hanging out in tattoo shops. I always thought they were really cool places. And then basically, uh, the guy who owned the tattoo, well, I thought he owned it, the guy who was the tattooist in the shop, one day was so drunk that he couldn't tattoo. And he just looked at me from the floor as I walked in. He goes, Dan, you can draw, can't you? I went, yeah. He goes, then you can probably tattoo. Sounds and like a solid grounding the in the industry to me. <laughs> yeah. He just handed me the keys to the shop and the machines, and, and then he went out, continued drinking. And then all of a sudden, a guy walked through the door, and he says, who the F are you? And I said, well, I'm your new tattooist, I guess. So, uh, and that guy was the owner. Yeah, that guy was the owner of the shop, which I didn't know. Yeah. So. Uh, well, thank you for giving us a window onto your world, Dan. Thank um, you. Dan's going to be on the stand for the rest of the day. So if you want to talk motorbikes with Dan, if you want to talk tattoos, artwork with Dan, he's here. He'll, he'll pose for pictures. He'll, he'll talk tattoos with you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Cheers.